Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2021 Honda Fortrax Rencon 680. We're going to go over some of its specs and features as well as what sets it apart from some of the other ATVs in Honda's model lineup for 2021. We'll also be touching on some of the Rencon's history too and what Honda has changed over the years or should I say what well, Honda hasn't changed over the years when it comes to this model. But all in all, we're gonna go over the Rencon, go over some of the features on it and what makes it what it is. And we'll start off first with pricing and options. Typically with Honda's models, you have multiple model options that make the models slightly different. For example, in the Rancher model lineup, you have multiple transmission, steering, and rear suspension options. With the Rencon, you used to have an optional GPS model referred to as a GPS scape. Honda introduced that in 2004 and it lasted for a few years until it was dropped from the lineup. Long story short, now you only have one model option on the Rencon and that's what you see here. If you want a feature like power steering, you need to check out one of the Rancher, Foreman, or Rubicon models as the Rencon is the only 4x4 model from Honda that does not have EPS as an available option. Same goes for a foot shift transmission. If you want a manual gearbox, then you need to check out the Rancher, Foreman, or Rubicon. And the last big feature that can be a deal breaker for some, if you want a differential lock, you need to check out one of the Foreman or Rubicon models as the Rencon does not have one. In the Rencon's defense though, you may lose out on some features, but if sheer performance is what you're after in a Honda, then the Rencon is it because it's the fastest utility ATV Honda makes for now. Honda's MSRP for the 2021 Rencon comes in at $94.99. And when it comes to color options, you better like red as that's the only option you have to choose from for 2021. Honda's toyed around with multiple colors over the years, but for this year, it's just red. I wanna take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy. When the Rencon was first introduced back in 2003, it was Honda's flagship ATV. It was their best of the best. It had their largest engine, which was a 650 at the time, and then later bumped up to a 680 in 2006. It was their first ATV to have an automotive style automatic three-speed transmission with a torque converter. And when they made the engine larger in 2006, they also threw on fuel injection too, which helped in increasing horsepower and improved fuel mileage. With the addition of a rollover sensor to kill the engine, front disc brakes, and more tweaks to improve the unit after a few years of customer feedback. And some of those things that you don't normally hear about, for example, the battery capacity was increased from 14 amp hours to 18 amp hours, and different valving in the rear shocks too. Also with the unit going to fuel injection, they moved the fuel gauge to the electronic display, and now when the fuel level reaches E and the warning light comes on, you have about 1.2 gallons of fuel remaining, which gives you approximately 28 miles of range. Next up, let's hit some numbers. The Rencon comes in at 657 pounds for its curb weight. That sounds heavy until you really start to compare it to some of Honda's other ATV models. A similar spec Rancher 420 comes in at 669 pounds and a Rubicon at 715 pounds. And now keep in mind that the Rencon was developed almost 20 years ago. The Honda went all out using lightweight forged aluminum in their suspension components to help keep weight down on what was their first ATV to have independent rear suspension. Ground clearance comes in at 9.1 inches with 6.9 inches of suspension travel up front and 8 inches of travel in the rear. Length is right at 83.2 inches with a width of 46.8 inches and a 50.8 inch wheelbase. Then the turning radius comes in right at 10.8 feet with the fuel capacity coming in at 4.4 gallons, including the 1.2 gallon reserve. Now for a few numbers for the guys that want to load their ATV up and work with it. The Rencon has a weight rating of 66 pounds on the front rack and 133 pounds on the rear rack. How does that stack up against the rest of the lineup from Honda? 
Well, the Rancher has the same weight rating on its racks. The Foreman, though, comes in at 88 pounds up front and 176 in the rear, with the Rubicon coming in at 99 pounds up front and 187 pounds in the rear. How about towing capacity? Well, technically the Rencon doesn't have an official tow rating from Honda as they don't give you a way to haul anything. You have to purchase an aftermarket attachment if you want to put a ball on your Rencon. Is that a big deal to you? To some people it is because you don't really have an official number to go off of like you do with the rest of the lineup, whereas the Rancher and Foreman both have 848 pound towing capacities while the Rubicon bumps it up a little bit and comes in at 1,322 pounds. And onto the corners of the Rencon, you have 25 by eight radial tires up front and 25 by 10 in the rear, wrapped around 12 inch aluminum wheels. The drivetrain in the Rencon has been quite popular with Honda using it in the Big Red when it was introduced back in 2009. And then the Big Red's replacement, the Pioneer 700 lineup, that started in 2014 and runs through to current day. It's a 675 cc liquid cooled overhead valve single cylinder engine mounted longitudinally in the Rencon. It has a four valve cylinder head with two short push rods to provide a broad power band. The camshaft is adjacent to the cylinder head to reduce engine height and together with a semi dry sump the overall engine height is reduced for a lower center of gravity. The semi dry sump oiling system also has an oil tank inside the engine cases, again to lower the engine height and allow for optimum engine placement to aid in Honda's hunt for better ground clearance. And when it comes to performance, the engine is rated at 38.1 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs and 36 foot pounds of torque at 5,000 RPMs. And when it comes to maintenance intervals, there every 600 miles or 100 hours after your first scheduled service at 20 hours or 100 miles. Honda's Rencon was the first ATV in the world to feature an automotive style automatic transmission. Though it features several innovations that cater specifically to an ATV application, the Rencon's torque converter operates in principles much like other torque converters. Basically it links the engine to the automatic transmission much like a manual clutch connects an engine to a manual gearbox. Both systems drive the unit and they also come into play when the vehicle stops. With a manual transmission, manual actuation of the clutch temporarily disengages the engine from the transmission when coming to a stop. In a similar fashion, a torque converter performs this connect disconnect function, but automatically as needed. So with a torque converter and automatic transmission, you only need to release the throttle and use the brake when stopping. A torque converter can accomplish this because it's a fluid coupling rather than a solid coupling. At low engine speeds, the torque converter slips internally, which allows the engine to spin independently of the transmission. As a result, the engine of the stopped unit is allowed to run at idle while the transmission is in gear. And when it's time to roll, you open the throttle and the torque converter then transfers power to the transmission to make the ATV move. In the Rencon, the engine output shaft drives a torque converter's impeller, which uses fins to pump fluid, in this case, engine oil. As this fluid drives the vanes of the torque converter's turbine, the spinning turbine then powers the automatic transmission to move the unit. The Rencon's automatic transmission uses three hydraulic clutches and an ECU that automatically selects one of the three forward gears or reverse. And how do you operate the transmission? An electric shift program, ESP, allows you to manually select gears through its three-speed transmission by pushing one of the two buttons mounted on the left side of the handlebar. Another switch on the right handlebar allows you to select either ESP or automatic mode for the transmission. So if you want it to be fully automatic, you just put it in automatic mode. And if you want to manually control the gearbox, you put it over in the ESP for electric shift program. And while we're still on the topic of transmissions, don't confuse this transmission with the DCT automatic transmissions that you'll find available on select models of the Rancher and the Rubicon lineup. The operation is the same when it comes to switching between automatic and manual modes, but internally the transmissions are completely different. 
With Honda's four-wheel drive system on the Rincon, you can shift on the fly between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive with a thumb-operated switch on the right side of the handlebars. In the Rincon, the four-wheel drive system is a torque-sensitive limited-slip front differential setup. The rear drive shaft joins the rear final drive gear case at a 77-degree angle, eliminating weight and the complexity of an additional shaft and joints. And now keep in mind, if you must have a locking differential, the Rincon is not for you. I suggest you check out one of the Foreman or Rubicon models as they come standard with a differential lock. Next up, let's start it up so you can hear what she sounds like in stock form. And that's the 2021 Honda Fortrax Rincon 680. What do you guys think about it? Are the limited color options keeping you away from considering a Rincon? Do you want to see Honda finally throw power steering and a differential lock on the Rincon? What would you like to see Honda change on the next generation Rincon? Maybe a Rincon 1000 DCT? Throw 100 horsepower in it and go crazy? Break the internet? <laughs> But what do you guys want to see out of Honda? I did hear down the grapevine that we might be seeing a new Rincon soon and it'll have an engine from one of Honda's motorcycles. I'm not saying it'll be a Rincon 1000, but Honda has been working on a new engine for a smaller Africa Twin and that new parallel twin engine would go perfectly in the new Rincon. But thanks as always for watching guys. I really appreciate the continued support and we'll see you in the next one.